In this video we will be taking a look at E.F. Schumacher's book Small is Beautiful, a study of economics as if people mattered. The book was first published in 1973 and has since become a classic of environmental economics and social philosophy. We will begin by taking a look at the major points he makes in this book and how some of his ideas are applied, or not applied, today. We will then examine some critiques of his ideas as well as their real-world limitations. Finally, I'll end with my thoughts on the book. Small is Beautiful starts by taking a critical look at the prevailing economic system in the 1970s. Schumacher argued that it is based on the false assumption that bigger is always better. He believed that the modern economic system is based on a faulty understanding of production. He pointed out that production is not the same thing as consumption. In his view, production is the creation of wealth, while consumption is the destruction of wealth. Schumacher argued that we need to shift our focus away from producing more and more cheaply made, low-quality, goods. In his view, producing these goods reduce the potential for the creation of wealth while their consumption wastes money. He also believed that it was important to choose products that are sustainable and ethically produced. His contention was that a successful economy would focus on the well-being of people and the planet, rather than on a cycle of endless growth and meaningless consumption. He felt that a modern production-based economy would eventually become unsustainable. First, it would lead to the depletion of easily obtained natural resources, such as fossil fuels, that aren't renewable. Another concern was that pollution levels and other environmental harm caused by high production would also create sustainability issues. He also expressed concerns that outsourcing these problems to developing nations would not solve the unsustainability issue. Transferring it might delay the problem but would, in all likelihood, make the situation worse. Perhaps the most important section of the book was on what Schumacher called the problem of bigness. He thought that there is a limit to the size of a human community. Beyond this limit, a society would find itself unable to maintain itself. Instead, he advocated for smaller scale, more decentralized production and consumption patterns. Schumacher thought this could involve buying locally produced and sustainable products and individuals growing their own food. This grew out of his visits to India where he observed village-based economics. He saw this as a way to move away from often inefficient and wasteful large-scale industrial production. He also thought that a simple and small economic system could have a positive impact on the environment. A similar point Schumacher raised is that large-scale production and consumption created a concentration of ownership in the hands of a few large corporations. He believed that this was harmful to society and the economy. He proposed a more decentralized and democratic system of ownership that he believed would be more efficient while also being more beneficial to workers and communities. He advocated for economic policies that would support community development and local self-reliance. While he tended to support a socialist political view, he expressed the opinion that socialism would fail if it simply tried to out-capitalize the capitalists with centralized, instead of community-based, policies. On consumption, Schumacher promoted developing a more frugal and sustainable lifestyle. He noticed that people tended to buy things that they really didn't need. Instead, he thought that we should make a conscious decision to consume less. And, when we do consume, we should purchase higher quality goods that will last longer and that will be useful to us. Schumacher is credited as the founder of the appropriate technology movement as described in Small is Beautiful. This movement prefers making technological choices and applications that meet criteria such as being small-scale, affordable by locals, decentralized, sustainable, energy efficient, and locally autonomous. Typically, this technology is centered on human-powered solutions like hand pumps and grain grinders. Another topic that Schumacher discusses in the book is that the modern educational system is not preparing people for the challenges of the future. He thought that the purpose of education isn't to enable people to earn a living, but should enable one to live a life. He advocated for an educational system that teaches people to think critically and to live responsibly. So, 
Are some of Schumacher's ideas being applied today, 50 years after he originally published Small is Beautiful? Are there areas where his ideas have been accepted and those where we have gone in a different direction? One of the key insights of Small is Beautiful is that economic growth is not the same as human well-being. Schumacher argued that the pursuit of endless economic growth can lead to a number of negative consequences, including environmental destruction, socioeconomic inequality and alienation. We have seen that the production of consumable goods requires the use of natural resources and often causes pollution. This area is where we have seen the most application of his ideas, at least on the surface. However, the solution often has been to hide the problem in developing countries especially China. While it has helped them to develop rapidly, it has been at a significant cost. When it comes to socio-economic inequality, we have really gone the opposite direction. Economic growth often benefits the wealthy at the expense of the poor. For example, when companies move their operations to countries with lower wages, they leave workers in developed countries unemployed. Perhaps the negative effects of this previous trend, such as recent supply chain problems and political instability, will become a catalyst for change. Alienation is one of the serious problems that we're dealing with today. Schumacher's original thoughts mainly dealt with the industrial system of the 1970s. What he missed was how repetitive and meaningless work in an office or service job can be. This has led to alienation and dissatisfaction among many low-income and corporate workers. Reversing this trend will be a challenge. Schumacher's calls for decentralization and locally autonomous businesses have been largely ignored. If anything, we've seen less local autonomy and more consolidation of businesses ranging from medical care to banking to entertainment services. Can this trend be reversed? Perhaps, but it will take a considerable effort to change this direction. I would say that Schumacher's thoughts on technology have been disrupted by the arrival of the internet and personal computing devices. It's difficult to get people to use a primitive hand-powered machine when they can see modern devices via a smartphone and exchange ideas with other people around the world. Education, especially higher education, is another area where things have gone in a different direction. College has become regarded as an expensive trade school necessary to get almost any job. Due to the high debt incurred, many students start out in life unable to live responsibly. Elementary and high school students in public schools are often given a poor quality education that does little to prepare them for real life. It's difficult to see how this can be easily moved back to Schumacher's ideas. Now. Let's discuss criticisms of Schumacher's ideas expressed in Small is Beautiful. Some critics argue that Schumacher's vision of a more decentralized, smaller-scale economy is unrealistic and utopian. They point to the fact that the world is already heavily interconnected and that it would be very difficult to roll back globalization on the scale he suggested. Others argue that Schumacher's ideas would lead to economic inefficiency and lower living standards. They point to the fact that large-scale production and consumption have led to significant increases in productivity and economic growth. They point out that economic growth has helped millions, if not billions, of people move beyond subsistence-level living conditions. Some critics argue that Schumacher's ideas are too vague and lack specificity. They point to the fact that he does not provide a clear roadmap for how to transition to a more decentralized, smaller-scale economy. This is an expected criticism since Small is Beautiful is more focused on laying out a utopian vision than outlining a detailed plan to get there. Schumacher's book has been criticized for being elitist and out of touch with the needs of ordinary people. Some detractors feel that his ideas are only appealing to people who are already privileged and wealthy. Even worse, they could be used to prevent key societal elements like class mobility and freedom of movement. Some point out Schumacher's anti-technology bias. They have concerns about his blanket criticism of large-scale technology. They feel that from his perspective in the early 70s he was unable to take into account the technical revolutions that came during the next three decades. Some also express concerns about his advocacy for smaller-scale, more traditional technologies. 
they point out that some of these methods are less sustainable, more likely to cause debilitating injuries to workers and more prone to pollution than modern technological methods. Finally, some argue that Schumacher had a romanticized view of the past, perhaps bordering on the noble savage mythology. They point to his nostalgic interpretation of primitive rural life. They feel that he is viewing this through rose-tinted glasses and fails to see the more difficult side of this life. Here's my take on Small is Beautiful. Overall, I think he gets some things right although some things are way off target. I think he is right that massive corporations can be harmful to individuals and communities. Large-scale consolidation of businesses can become depersonalizing and alienating. Big box stores can move into a town, bankrupting local business and destroying a sense of community. The corporations are typically not concerned about how their actions can disrupt the lives of ordinary people. An interesting development that we are now seeing is a rollback of globalization. While it probably won't be on the scale Schumacher envisioned, it has become obvious that he did predict some issues with globalization. We will probably see companies prioritizing shorter and more reliable supply chains over the next few years. This has the potential of revitalizing some communities. What I think he missed to some degree was that big government can create situations that are just as bad or worse than big corporations. Big, unaccountable, governments can encourage behaviors like rent-seeking, deliberate inaction and even outright fraud and corruption. I think Schumacher did correctly surmise that an overemphasis on production for economic growth can cause various types of problems. China is perhaps the most glaring example of this. While they have been quite successful in their goal to become the manufacturing center of the world, this has had some significant costs. It has given them a reputation for producing mass quantities of low-quality goods, many of which don't add value to buyers' lives. Within the country, it has given them ghost cities and poorly built infrastructure. Going forward, it's clear that we need a more balanced approach to production that falls between a crude hand-cranked grain mill and mass-producing cheap junk products. I do mostly agree with Schumacher's views on education and that colleges shouldn't be trade schools but a place to learn how to learn. I also think education at lower levels needs to be more individualized as well as small and community-based to better serve young people than bureaucrats. My biggest criticisms relate to his anti-technology and elitist views. Looking back from 50 years in the future, it's clear that Schumacher didn't grasp what was to come. To be fair, few at that time realized that almost everyone today would be walking around with a powerful computer connected to a worldwide network. While this technological explosion hasn't been perfect, it has had far more benefits. I do find his elitist views more concerning. It was an unfortunately common attitude with economic and environmental thinkers in the 1970s. They seemed to hold on to colonialist views, such as the noble savage, on some level. Also, as I mentioned, there was a tendency to gloss over shortcomings of small-scale production by over-romanticizing them. Have you read Schumacher's Small is Beautiful? If so, what are your thoughts on it? If you haven't read it, I recommend you do so. It's an insightful perspective on environmental economic philosophy even if it's somewhat dated and flawed in some areas. Thanks for watching. Please give me a like if you enjoyed this video and please comment to let me know your thoughts on it. Also, check out our other videos about other philosophical topics.